Hey, thanks for clicking on this video and checking out our church service. Whether you're new to Salem or you've been coming for a while, welcome and we hope you enjoy the service. To skip to different parts of the video, we do have chapter markers in the description box below. So click on one of those to be taken directly to that portion of the service. Our website has a lot more information about us. So if you're looking for information, check out our website at salemcovenant.org. If you're in the Duluth Superior area, you are welcome to join us at a service anytime. And if you're watching from afar, we hope and we pray that we can be an encouragement to you and partner with you for about an hour to help you encounter God, equip people, and extend the gospel. All right, grab your Bible, lean forward, and join us. Good morning, church. Welcome. What a joy it is to worship with you in this uh, beautiful Sunday morning. I'm so grateful that you're here with us. And I was thinking maybe everyone is out fishing this morning with the big opener. And uh, also welcome to everyone that's uh, joining us online. We so appreciate your time. If you're visiting us for the first time, I'm Pastor Stephen Osborne. And uh, this morning is uh, really special for us as we celebrate with Haley and with Grant as they are getting confirmed this morning. And so um, we wanna celebrate them well this morning. And so you're also invited after the service to join them for a time of coffee and we've got some good looking cupcakes out there. And uh, so uh, please do not be in a hurry to uh, um, leave this afternoon and as we celebrate with them. Also, uh, you probably received this um, uh, our bulletin on the back, there's some sermon notes, and I want to encourage you, if you can write down some names here, um, some things to just pray for this morning. We want to lift up Barb Pearson. Um, she unfortunately received some bad news um, just with, uh, with her cancer. Um, she's been in the hospital this week, and um, we want to just continue to lift her up. Um, uh, for encouragement and also for Roger. He's just been struggling a little bit this week with health issues as well. And for Renee and Mick. Uh, and then Jesse uh, is out in Haiti. I think he's flying back on Monday, so tomorrow. Just pray for him. And then also as we continue to pray for Jan and for, for Pete. Let me pray for us and then uh, we'll pay attention to the screen for our weekly announcements. Father God, we are so blessed this morning to be together as we worship you. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome in this place. I pray, Lord, that once again you will meet with us, your people. I pray that you will bring hope and encouragement to our hearts, Lord. And even as we stand this morning in agreement and as we affirm Haley and Grant and their faith as they're getting confirmed. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be so present with them this morning. I pray that this morning and this moment will carry them for the rest of their lives. And so we just, uh, Lord, lift up all of these prayer requests. Uh, the rest of the family, Lord, we lift up uh, Barb and Roger, Renee and Mick and Jan and Pete with the health challenges. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will encourage them this morning, that you'll be very present, and that they will have the sense that their family is praying for them as they go through uh, these health struggles. Father, we also pray for Jesse and his work in Haiti, and we're excited for him to be back. We pray for safety as he wraps up, see, as he wraps up his time in Haiti. We pray uh, just for, for safe travels. So we give you the rest of this time and this morning. I pray that you will open up our eyes and our ears to hear and see you as you work in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pay attention to the screen. Hey, my name is Nick, and here's what's up at Salem. Hey, hey, thanks for checking out Salem Online. Now, if you're new to Salem, you don't know much about us and you wanna get connected with us, uh, down in the description box, there is a link to our digital connect card. Fill it out with as much information as you feel comfortable sharing. And then later on, someone from Salem will reach out to you to connect with you and answer any questions you may have about our church. 
As a church, we support many local and global ministries. And this month we are highlighting Satori Brown. And in August, she is going to be going to North Africa. And I had the opportunity to sit down with her, have an interview, and that interview is on the missions page of our website. And also, we support the Lake Superior Life Care Center. So please head to the missions page of our website to see all of the things that they would be blessed by. We are super excited to tell you guys about a new page on our website. It's called Steps and Stories under the Go Deeper tab. And this webpage has a bunch of stories, testimonies from people in our church, and we hope that it can be an encouragement to you. And then May 22nd is a busy day. First of all, we have a meet the staff party after our second service. So if you're new-ish to Salem within the last six months or so, and you wanna just meet the staff, there's gonna be a staff party right after the second service in the Remedy Room. And then also that night, a bunch of local churches from around the area are gathering here at Salem for prayer and contemporary worship in a night called Revive. Salem Family Camp is happening June 25th through the 26th. And the 26th is a Sunday, and Salem is gonna be hosting the worship service at camp on Sunday, which means there will not be any Sunday service here in the Salem building. So just, you gotta know that. And there will be baptisms happening at our family camp this year. So two things, if you are interested in getting baptized, please contact Stephen. And if you are interested in staying the night from the 25th Saturday to the 26th on Sunday, you need to register through camp. So head to the events page of our website to find that information. All right, that's it for the announcements this week. So head to the events or the missions page of our website to find out some more information. So now next up in the service is our worship time. So Chris Du and the worship team will lead you in worship. And the lyrics are gonna be on the bottom part of this screen for you to follow along with however you feel comfortable to at home. And as you engage with us over the next hour or so through the music and the message, we hope and we pray that you encounter God. Good morning, Salem Covenant. How is everyone doing this morning? Good, good. Um, since it's Confirmation Sunday, I would like to invite you to a call to worship. Our confirmants will lead us in this call to worship. Please join us. Thank you. Who enables us to come to this time and place? What does God want most of us here? That we remember what God has done, acknowledge God's presence with us, and witness to God's steadfast love and mercy. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Alleluia. was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I've been here 
sleep, my sin is heavy My chains break, I can wave your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan You call me a citizen Solid rock I stand All other ground 
for your love. Thank you so much that when life is crumbling around us, we have the solid rock to stand on. Um, we worship you, Father. We glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys can go ahead and take your seats. Our compliments are here this morning, and uh, I want to invite them up to come share their testimonies with us today. Can we give them a hand of applause? Um, I'm Haley Osborne. For as long as I can remember, I've always been in a Christian home and family. I grew up as a pastor's kid, and I always had a community of loving Christians and lots of friends. I gave my life to Christ on July 28, 2020. After I got baptized, I started to play in the Remedy Band, and then it grew into playing in the band on Sundays. When I got baptized, it was a choice of not only thinking I'm a Christian because my parents are. It became my own, own choice and connection with God. 
Through Remedy, I've met my closest friends and got more close with God. I also met a close friend at the end of seventh grade. They gave me someone I could talk to about anything at school without feeling like I'm the only one who knows God at my school. I always met one of the best friends who has also been there with me through so much in my faith and life. I've grown stronger and deeper in my faith than ever before in my life, and I know God has good things for me. I like the church as a fellowship of believers because I think it is important to have a relationship between equals and to have a community to be there with you and support you in your walk of faith. I also like a conscious dependence on the Holy Spirit because you need to trust the Holy Spirit and rely on Him to have a relationship of trust. My favorite verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. I love that verse because we need to build each other up when we do not have the strength to do it by ourselves. We need, to com- we need the community and friends and, help- and family to help us when we are sad or alone. Um, hello, my name is Grant Johnson, and I was born into a Christian family, so my whole life I have believed in God. When I was five or six years old, I asked Jesus into my heart with my dad, but I didn't fully understand what it meant. So I just fast forward a couple of years and I have really bad anxiety and I get panic attacks before like the first day of school, sports, games, and practices. I'm going to friends' houses, birthday parties, and even camp. My parents helped me through it a lot. And, my, and then my mom pointed me to the um, verse Joshua 1, 9, which says, Be strong and courageous. The Lord is with you wherever you go. And then my mom got me a uh, Macaw wooden like wood burn sign that has that verse on my wall so I can see it when I go to bed every night when I wake up every morning and it's a reminder that God is with me wherever I go and then confirmation has taught me a lot about the Bible this helped me in deep deep in my faith at one big day a junior high youth event near the cities I requit committed my life to Christ that's it that was just last year um the two affirmations that I chose were churches of fellowship of believers because we're all one in Jesus Christ and we need to work together as a community to grow in our faith. And a conscious dependence on the Holy Spirit because as Christians, we all have the Holy Spirit inside us and the Holy Spirit gives us strength, guidance, and wisdom. Um, my favorite Bible verse is Joshua 1.9. It says, be strong and courageous, the Lord is with you wherever you go. It's because it helped me through, get over my anxiety and I don't have anxiety anymore because of God giving me strength. If you're maybe visiting us this morning for the first time, our confirmation program is a two-year program. And so the first year they go through the Old Testament and then through the New Testament. And then there's uh, two confirmation retreats um, that they have to attend and they work through the covenant affirmations. And um, just this morning, Grant Haley, we are so proud of you guys and wonderful testimonies. And um, it is our prayer as your church family, that you will continue to build on this incredible faith and the things that you have learned so far. This is not graduation from church or graduation from faith. This is a new, ser- a new journey and a new season as you continue to grow. And uh, we pray that the Lord will continue to use you guys mightily uh, for his kingdom and within this congregation. But again, we are so proud of you guys. And um, we pray even this morning that you will just have such a profound sense of the Holy Spirit as we affirm God's faith um, and, uh, and you guys in your faith this morning. Today we rejoice because Grant and Haley are on the same gracious pilgrimage as the faith as we are having been drawn by God's word, by holy example, by the sacraments, and by prayer, we know that their journey journey has only begun. Yet we are confident that God, who began a good work in them, will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. Let us give thanks to God, who awakens faith in them and in us.
Grant and Haley answering only for yourself and in perfect freedom to be silent if you cannot yet answer. I now call upon you to respond to the following questions. Do you confess personal faith in Jesus Christ and desire with God's help to be his disciple? I do. do you believe with the church of Jesus Christ that the Bible, the Old and the New Testament is the word of God, telling the story of God and God's people in the past and guiding them today? If so, answer, I do. I do. And then last one. As you continue in your life, do you intend to keep worshiping in Christ's church, listening to his word, and responding to his call according to your faith? We would like to now invite the family um, and the Remedy volunteers to come and pray with us for these two camp friends. Father God, we just praise you and thank you for being an awesome, intimate God who knows us, each one of us. Lord, you know Grant and you know Haley. God, we just pray now that this would be a formative moment in their faith walks, Lord. And we pray that you would just continue to walk with them as they walk through the path that you have called them to, wherever you bring them, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to grow them and be on the forefront of their minds. And Lord, every gift, every good thing is from you, Lord. And we pray, oh God, that that would just be reflected in the lives of Grant and Haley. And we just praise you and thank you. Lord, we thank you for the work that you've done in Grant's life and in Haley's life for surrounding them with godly families and godly friends. Uh, I pray that this would just be the next step in them uh, making this faith walk their own and that they could call you their God, not just the God of their families, not of their parents, but theirs. Uh, let this faith become personal at this point and let them seek you with all their hearts. Uh, bless their efforts and continue to surround them with support and love as you have been doing. Lord, we just thank you so much for the blessing of children. We thank you for Grant and Haley, who are such an example of godly children, and we thank you for that. We praise you for that. Uh, we pray for their walk with you, Lord, that you will continue to draw them closer to you. Holy Spirit, just pour into their lives so that they may go from strength to strength, Lord. And we do pray that you who began a good work in them will complete it. We just praise you for this uh, wonderful day, and we are excited for their futures, Lord. Lord, thank you for Haley and for Grant. Thank you for their faith and their testimonies. Um, Lord, I thank you for everything they've learned in the last two years. Um, I pray that you would strengthen the foundation um, and continue the work you've began in their lives and that you would bless them. Um, Lord, I just wanna thank you for Haley and Grant, um, for who you created them to be and that they just know their identity and who you created them to be um, and that they just continue to seek you out every day and see your light in the darkness. Um, that you just give them your godly wisdom, Lord. You remove the bad fruits and replace them with your good fruits. Um, and you just, that they can just see you in every moment of their life. Um, and that uh, every day they just walk in your spirit.
Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your love, for your rescue plan for each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you again for uh, these last couple years and the opportunity for Grant and Haley to to uh, dive deeper into your word. We thank you for Christu and and uh, the time that he has spent investing in them too, Lord. We just pray that this increased knowledge would not stay in their head, Lord, but that it would t- take deep root into their hearts. Lord God, this morning we um, want to join as a family, as, as one body, and thank you for these two amazing people. Thank you for the choices that they've made, Lord, to put you first and um, to follow you. And Lord, this morning we want to pray this blessing over them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give them a round of applause? Well, for those of you who do not know, my name is Christu. I am the Youth and Worship Director here at Salem. And since I have to sit with those compliments for two years, I have the privilege of doing the sermon today. Um, At Confirmation, we work through, well, like Stephen said, the Old and the New Testament over a course of two years. And we do a Confirmation retreat once a year. And at the Confirmation retreat, we look at the six different covenant uh, covenant affirmations. Um, I'm going to just quickly show you the six, but we're going to talk about a specific one today. The six affirmations of the covenant is, number one, the centrality of the Word of God. Number two, the necessity of new birth. A commitment to the whole mission of the church. The church as a fellowship of believers. A conscious dependence on the Holy Spirit and the reality of freedom in Christ. Those are the six affirmations that we work through um, on our retreats, but today I want to talk to you about the importance of the centrality of the Word of God. How important is it to have the Word of God at the center of your life? Um, In everything we do, everywhere we go, what we say, how we speak, how we walk, what we do in our lives for the Word of God to guide us in the way we live. Um, The Bible, we have the Bible as the Word of God. And um, what we know is that the Bible is the living Word of God. It is alive and breathing. When we read the Bible and we dive into it, it changes us, right? It forms us. It shows us who God is, but it also shows us who we are. It's the one thing in this life that gives us hope. It gives us peace. It shows us the truth. Uh, And I love this point right here at the end. The Bible is God's love letter to the world. And if you know anything about me, I love talking about how much God loves us. And when I read the Bible, this is what I see in the story. And the whole story is how much God loves us, what he's done for us, and how we then respond to God's love. But this morning, talking about the centrality of the Word of God, um, we have this one question, and I'm very glad that you guys asked this question this morning. How can we make God's Word the center of our lives? Um, I'm going to use a small illustration to show you. Uh, Cameron, will you help me quick?
<laughs> okay. I hope it doesn't fall. This is this was the nicest one I could get. get. <laughs> it's pretty big. <clears throat> you, Cameron, you can stand here and hold it up for the whole sermon if you want. It's going to be real quick. <laughs> um, how can we make God's word the center of our lives? We're going to look at James 1, and I'm going to read from verse 22. If you want to go there in your Bibles, you're welcome. James 1. Verse 22. Now, every time that I've read this verse, um, it's every time I've read this verse, to me, it sounds like we have to work. This is something we have to do, right? And we're going to look at that this morning. By the way, something that I've loved about the Covenant Church uh, since I got here, Stephen has told me, be careful what you say because people have this one question, right? Where is it written? And my first response was like, don't you have a Bible? It's written in the Bible. That's where it's written. <laughs> but what I love about working through the affirmations is it, it says more. It's, there's more to the question that where is it written? It's not just show me the verse. It's also how do we understand what it says? It's not just, oh, page so and so. It's reading the scripture, understanding what God, God's word says to us. If you have the passage ready, I'm going to read for you. Um, I'm reading from New King James Version. It's James 1 from verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in, in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. See how when you read that, it sounds like we're going to start working. First time you read that, you go, Let's do a hundred missions trips and let's get out there and let's start work. Let's start working, right? That's what I've always seen when I read, when I read this scripture. The first thing I want to show you this morning, though, is if we say, where is it written? How do we understand what this says? First thing I want to point out here is James is, re is writing to the Jews at the time, writing to the Christian Jews. So these are believers. He could, he, he could write this to us today. We are believers. Amen? And something that's happening with the Jews, they had this conflict of, we need to obey the law. We need to do what the law says. We need to work. We need to do. This is something that they were struggling because there's a new law that came into place with Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at that today. But reading this passage... Um, you can go to the next slide, Andrew. Uh, but be doers of the word and not only hearers, deceiving yourselves. What this is telling me is when you read the word and you only hear it and you don't do it, you know what? You're only cheating yourself. And it's silly because in youth group, we always have this thing of like, hey, don't sin. I know sometimes it's fun, but don't sin. You know, who would like to go out there and just destroy his life? Just sin and destroy your whole life. Because it is good to hear the word and do the word. And there can be some touchy subjects there, right? How about forgiveness? Forgiving is, will, be, will benefit you. It will be good for you. Read the word and do the word. Not only read it and forget. And that's why I've got this mirror up here today. Uh, I've had a couple of compliments. <laughs> and, and the problem with... That was, that was unnecessary. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Stephen. He always has my back. Um, so looking at this passage, what James is saying... 
deceiving yourself, it will look like this. For anyone who hears the word and, and don't do it, it's like someone who looks into a mirror. The look into the mirror there, the observe, the Greek word for it is katanoeo. Katanoeo. It means to take note, consider carefully. It's not, hey, it's not like this. You know when you're walking in the mall and you go, it's not glancing at yourself. It's not taking a, like a quick peek. It is to take note and consider carefully that everything is in place. You are looking at, you are studying yourself. This is what someone looks like who hears the word and do not do it. But I love this next part. It says, you study yourself and then you walk away forgetting what kind of man you were. In the NIV, it says it a little different. That's why I like the New King James. It says, forgetting what kind of man he was. So let's just take this back for a second. Before he looked into the mirror, we've established that James was writing to, to believers, right? The Christian Jews, believers. If you're a believer, the day you come to Christ, what happens? What's the first thing someone tells you? When you come to Christ, you're a child of God. Yeah, baby. We're forgiven. You're a child of God. This is your identity. You are a child of God. With that identity, some of us, instead of doing what the word says, we go to the mirror. Like, oh my gosh, I'm bowling. I see this wrong. I see that wrong. The tie feels a little bit short. You see everything that's wrong. This is what happens to me when I look in the mirror. I immediately feel older. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't see my knees, but I immediately feel all... You see all your flaws. You see all your shortcomings. And then you leave forgetting the kind of man you were. Now, I'm walking with this new identity. I'm not good enough. I'm not forgiven. You know, if the devil can attack you with this one thing, he'll try to take your eyes off of God. Because then we just look at ourselves. Then the Jews, the Christian Jews at the time, are right back where they were. Where were they? Before Jesus, where were they? Working hard to obey the law. Doing it themselves. Isn't that what the Bible says? The Bible says Jesus came to, not to, Abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. The law, Paul says the law was given to show us that we need a savior. That's why the law is there, to show us we need a savior. Now they're back to square one. Oh my gosh, I'm just, and that's what the devil will do. You know what? You're actually, you thought you were forgiven, but the other day, you did this, you did that, you know. Actually, you're not righteous. And we walk around with that identity. That is what James is saying. That's what it's like for someone to hear the word and not be a doer of the word. Now, the same Greek word, this is, this is kind of cool. The same Greek word we find, katanoeo, we find in Romans. And in this passage, it is where Abraham, Paul is making an example of Abraham and his faith. And Abraham had a promise from God, right? And that the seed of, well, everyone will come from Abraham. But at this time, Abraham is 100. I'm looking at Joe because he's, he's my go-to guy on theology. He's like 100 years old. He doesn't know if anything's working, right? Sarah, his wife, is also old. She, nothing's working there either. They're not going to have any children, not soon. But Abraham does something different. Let's go to, uh, I've, I've got the passage, I think, on the screen here. Romans 4, verse 19. It says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. That consider. He did not cataneo his own body. 
already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. What did he not do? He did not cut a nail himself. In the NIV, it says, the, the strong part of the negative is there, he did not waver at the promise. He understood. I mean, faith is not denial, guys. He knew he was old, but where was his focus? Was it on himself? Because then he would have been a hearer of the promise and not a doer. But his focus was not on himself. It was on God. He did not cut a nail himself. Instead, he had his focus on God, 100% on God. To me, I found it interesting looking at this, this uh, scripture that James does not say, if you hear the word and don't do it, then you're like this. But if you hear, but, um, if you hear the word and don't do it, then you're like a man looking in the mirror and forgetting who he was. But if you're someone who hears the word and does what it says, he doesn't say you're like a man looking in the mirror and remembering what he was. Did you guys see that? He says if you hear the word and don't do it, you look in the mirror and you forget your identity and you walk away forgetting who you were. But he does not say if you hear the word and do what it says, you are like someone who looks in the mirror and remembers who you were. That's not what he says. In fact, if you're a doer of the word, you're not someone who looks in the mirror at all. He leaves it out when you're a doer of the word. Listen to this. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the looks into, I was struggling with this Greek word, para, para, Kupto. There we go. Parakupto. It is someone who looks intently. To look carefully. Inspect curiously. So someone not looking at himself, but inspects the law of liberty. Curiously. That someone is a doer of the word. What is the law of liberty? It's not talking about the commandments. Remember, James is speaking to the Christian Jews, saying you're not doing it yourself. You need to move your focus somewhere else. This is not the law of the Old Testament. He's speaking about a different law, a different law that we find in Jesus. Galatians 3. Uh, this is too much to put on the screen and I'm not a fast typer. So if you want to uh, go to Galatians 3 verse 10, then you can follow with me. We're going to look at what the law of liberty is and what we have in Christ. Galatians 3 verse 10 says this, For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. This law is the Old Testament. The Old Testament laws. This is trying to fulfill those laws in your own strength. We've established that Jesus fulfilled the laws on our behalf, right? They are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God. Because they're righteous... The righteous will live by faith. Not by our works in the law. By faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. But here it is. The law of, law of liberty. Are you guys ready? Verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Now, what James is telling us here starts to look a little bit different.
James is saying, if you hear the word and don't do what it says, you don't live it out, then we forget who we are in Christ. But when you study the word of God and make it the center of your life, and you live by it, and you walk by it, and you treat other people the way it teaches you to, and you speak the way it tells you to, when you do that, when you study the law of liberty, Jesus, then you become a doer of the work. Doer of what work? You know what? This world needs to see Jesus. And we are his body. We are the hands and feet. This is the work. What did Jesus say? Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. How will they know that you are mine? The way you love each other. This is the work for us to study the, the law of liberty and living it out. Our faith should not be in works. Our faith should be in Jesus. <clears throat> I got too many notes today. How do we make the Word of God the center of our lives? I want to finish with this final passage. <clears throat> I'm going to read from John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. I'm going to jump to verse 14. The word became flesh and dwelled among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The centrality of the Word of God, Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Is Jesus the center of your life? Does everything revolve around Jesus? Are we making him the center of of our lives, because when you study the word, not yourself, when you study the word, you start to become a doer of the work. We start to look like Jesus to those who need it. We start to look like Jesus for each other. Love one another. Grant, Haley, I want to encourage you guys. To through, there's going to be a lot of struggles. There's going to be a lot of obstacles to overcome in this life. But when you make Jesus the center of your life, he is your foundation. The devil can bring anything. If you do not forget who you are in Christ, then you're going to be okay. No matter what happens, you're going to make it. doesn't matter what life throws at you. When Jesus is the center, you're going to be okay. He'll be glorified, and the world will see Jesus in your lives. That's how we make an impact, make a difference in this world. Make Jesus the center of your life. Make the Word of God the center of your life. Amen. I'm going to pray for us. Lord God, thank you for your son. Thank you for Jesus. And that while we look to him and put our focus on him, not on ourselves, but on him only, 
we can do the work that we are called to. Lord, I pray that you'll make this word alive in our hearts, that we'll make a decision today to make the word of God the center of our lives. That we won't look at our own faults and our own mistakes and our own shortcomings, but that we'll continue to look to you because you are the one who forgives us. You are the one who makes us righteous. It's not by our works. It's not by trying to, to obey the laws. It is looking to you, accepting the work of the cross. Jesus. If you're sitting here this morning, I want to make this invitation to you. If you're saying, Chris, I hear you and I want to be a doer of the work. I want to live it out. But I've always tried in my own strength. Or maybe you're saying, Chris, I didn't know that I wasn't the one who had to do it. That Jesus already did it for me on the cross. That I want to ask you if you want to make this commitment to him today. If you want to accept the work that he's done for you. If you want to stop today to stop looking at yourself in the mirror going, I'm not good enough. Put away the mirror and start looking to God saying, He is good enough. That's why I'm forgiven. That's why I'm righteous. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Say, Lord, this morning, I want to accept the work of the cross. I want to stop listening to the lies of the devil and start focusing on you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Help me, lead me, guide me as I follow you in doing the work that you've called me to. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Chris Dew. Um, one of the ways we worship here at Salem is through song, and so I want to invite you. Um, we're going to stand and close in, in a song, and another way that we worship is through our giving. And so during this last song, the ushers will pass an offering plate around, so if you choose to worship in that way, you have that opportunity. Um, as the plate comes to you, if there's not an usher by you, just please Keep passing it along so that we can get those plates all the way to the back and give everyone the opportunity to worship in that way. So please, would you stand and join us as we, as we close in song? Grace on top of me With your grace on top of me
God, uh, for the message that Christy shared this morning. Thank you um, that you have given us your word, that it's something that we can turn to always, that we can always come back to it. We know that it never changes. I pray that your word will just be alive in our hearts uh, as we go out after this week, God, um, that we'll just use it the way that you intended for us. So thank you for that. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Go in peace. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. So if you're interested in learning more about Salem and getting connected with us, check out the description box of this video because there's a ton of links uh, that you can click on to find out more. And let me point out the Connect card. It's your way of starting a conversation with us about God, about our church, via a phone call or an email. So please fill that out if you're interested. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.